There's never a shortage of shows or sights and sounds throughout this city, but for the next few hours, all eyes are glued to Allegiant Stadium here in Las Vegas. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup on tap as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. It takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle. They'll begin on the ground with Jacobs. And not a whole lot there, maybe a yard to the 27. No doubt about it, a really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Second down, Jacobs once more. And he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and they're left with a third and eight. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. An early tough test on the opening drive. This is third and eight. And they go play action here with O'Connell. That is caught, and he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. That one goes for 30 yards. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit them with some big pass plays early, it takes a starch right out of them. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. They'll give him four yards there, and it's second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. O'Connell to throw on second down. Over the middle, that's caught by Adams. And Devontae's going to have a Raiders first down as he'll get this down to the 32. They get six on the pickup there as the drive continues. And he's already got two catches on the opening drive. <laughs> they know he's going to be a handful. And sometimes you game plan for that offensively. You want to make sure that guy touches the ball. And sometimes it just happens naturally. And then you change your game plan. When he has the hot hand, you keep going back to him because he's running routes with time. Touchdown, Raiders! Jacoby Myers, 32 yards. And the Raiders get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Well, they spoke about the importance of getting off to a good start, and they're on their first drive, Charles, into the end zone for the touchdown. And what an advantage for them. They're already clicking one drive in, didn't need to wait to get up to full speed. We had heard about the extra time they put in with each other, trying to learn each other's skills, what they like, the whole deal, and it paid off early in this one. I would expect them to keep firing on the next drive and keep that connection going. Touchdown, ready to kick it away is Carlson. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And now it looks like he's in some discomfort after being tackled at the end of that return. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. Out comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here.
And they'll go play action here with Stroud. Open man is Noah Brown. Now he's loose down the left sideline. And he takes it all the way down to the 22. A huge play there for Houston. 51 yards. Just a breakdown there defensively. It looked like someone got their wires crossed because no one seemed to pick him up at all. He's running free, and there's not a quarterback in the league who's going to miss that throw. That's a huge play. And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and 10. And that is caught, but he will come down out of bounds, says the side judge, incomplete. I don't see more of them trying to get him the football out of the backfield. They love what he can do in open space, and they believe that he creates mismatches they can exploit. Now a second and 10. Now the first carry for Devin Singletary. And a good job by the Raider defense yet again as they drop him for a second straight loss. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. We knew both of these safeties were good in run support, but how about the play we just saw there? How about that closing speed? Able to get to the outside part of the field and turn that play into a loss. Stroud on third down now. And he's going to be taken down. Back around the 35-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. That sack there, that likely brings out the field goal unit, so they might have to settle for three here on their opening drive. They did some nice things, getting things started there, moving the ball downfield, but taking that sack on third down. That lets the air out of the momentum balloon just a little bit. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives. Now they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. now following the main field goal he'll send this one away DeAndre Carter now from his end zone and no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17 yard line second drive of the game coming up for this Las Vegas offense a long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And, partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. And because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Don't need it all back at once, but you figure they're going to need something here. 17 yards to go on second down. Fakes the handoff. Now O'Connell to throw. His throw incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw here, O'Connell. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he gets it up to the 10-yard line here. They'll get only a yard out of that, and it'll bring up fourth down. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. Here's A.J. Cole now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. On the return, it's King. It's a 42-yard punt, but eight on the return. And the Texans with great field position to start this drive as they take over first and 10. Go, 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 go. 
First and ten, it's Stroud. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. We always hear a lot of veterans on the defensive side of the football. They talk about smelling blood in the water, putting pressure on a rookie. They got to him there to force it free, but couldn't recover. Then you mentioned the pressure. Rookie quarterback, you're going to bring more pressure to him at all times because you don't know how he's going to hold up. He was fortunate there. Luck was on his side, able to recover that fumble. After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. The fumble on first down. Now here's second down. Texans football to start quarter two as they've got it facing a second and long situation. Oh, you saw that one coming. It's intercepted, thrown back across his body. Picked off by Trayvon Merrig. And the Raiders are going to take over once again at their own 25-yard line. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. That's what love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. He's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers, and they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. They swing that out wide to Jacobs. They can't blow it. Absolutely filthy joke. He's got some space now. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. Now it looks like we've got a Raider here, slow to get up. We'll take a break and get a report from Vegas after this. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 32-yard line. Running straight ahead is Jacobs. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. That tackle behind the line made by Will Anderson. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. He gets it left side to Johnson. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Well, this has certainly been a nice drive with the way they've spread the football around. Here, they even get the fullback involved in the passing game. That's got to cause a lot of consternation on the defensive side. You've got to cover him, too. That makes things really difficult. And O'Connell now to throw. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Desmond King picks it. And the Texans are going to have it here as they'll start at their own 24-yard line. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. Good push up front and that run in between the tackles. Let's play the leverage game here. Offensive line just got lower than the defensive front, and they were able to get their pads on them and move them backwards and create space for their running back to roam. They'll let this go deep for Collins. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. And that time, there's not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Second and 10. Now Stroud. And incomplete. Well, this defense is going to have to finish the job. There's still a second half that they have to play. But so far, an absolute total effort. 
have disrupted the passing game, stressed the pocket for the quarterback. They forced him into errant throws. Everything they're doing has been executed well. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. And that ball incomplete, nearly intercepted. Took a chance with that one. What a lead to a fourth down. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're saying. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. On is the punter, Johnston, now as he sends this one away. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And it'll be Raiders football first and 10. Here's Las Vegas ready to take the field. But not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum. They were moving the football, but something to at least build on for this offense as they run back out here. Yeah, you're right about that. Up until that last play, everything was working pretty well for this offense. Gaining chunks of yardage, getting first downs, really making a... And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Derek Stingley picks it, and he is going to bring this back inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that, that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. Pierce. Fighting, but he won't get too far. Maybe a yard, that's all, down to the two. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Good work there, holding him out on first down. And this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two? Maybe even three more plays. From the two now, second and goal. Singletary. Is into the end zone. Touchdown, Houston. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of a season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks it's pretty impressive. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. The Raiders offense coming back out onto the field. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive, because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. Throwing on second down. Here's O'Connell. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Christian Harris. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Stroud sets up the play action. 
being chased out left. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. He'll get 10 there all on his own, but it'll be second down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. The second down throw now from Stroud. This is caught. It's Brown. Touchdown, Texans. Noah Brown. A 24-yard touchdown. And the Texans are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. That pass also evens the ledger for the rookie quarterback. Had the interception earlier, and now he gets the touchdown throw. The ideal touchdown-interception ratio is, what, 3-1 to one for the best quarterbacks? But he's a rookie. Just getting back to even is a big deal. Increases the confidence his teammates have in him as he tries to become their leader. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And in hindsight, probably should have taken a knee as he only gets this out to the 16-yard line. The Vegas offense ready for their next possession. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Well, this is a half for not just the coverage, but the entire defense is setting the tone in this game. Here's second and ten. Back to throw, O'Connell. He's going to float this one deep right side. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. On third down, here comes Jacobs. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts. And he's not going to get anywhere close to the marker as they'll stop him well short of the yellow line. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. Here's King. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And the Texans will take over. The Texans with the football here late in this first half. And with great starting field position and a couple of timeouts at their disposal, they'll certainly have the green light here. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 46. And Stroud now to throw. Quick slant to Brown. And they'll get to him after a gain of seven to the 47. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Stroud looking to throw. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Normally you think the tight end's going to be able to catch the football and handle that contact. But in this case, 
Maybe a little too much target to hit. That one was timed well. Incomplete. Now here's Stroud on third down. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. Stroud now on first and ten. Throw out wide is incomplete. I tell you what, that's a bedroom play from a guy in his first season in the NFL. A lot of rookies are trying to force something there. He thought better of it, and that was the right decision. Here now is second and ten, again from the 41. Here's Stroud. He's got it to Collins, complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Four seconds left, and there's the timeout. In field goal range and a chance to tack on three before intermission. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. Fairbairn able to put this one through, and that will open the lead up now to 20 to seven. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Texans going to take over here to start quarter number three. This offense set to begin the third quarter, and Charles, if they had a checklist of things they wanted to accomplish in the first half, certainly at the top of that list would be having the lead, and they've got that here. That's always the most important box to check, isn't it? But also, they've had some success in their passing game, so probably an empty box establishing the run. They're on pace for fewer than 100 yards in this one, so now they want to make sure that they get that going so they truly have a control in this ball game and down the stretch, being able to be balanced, either throw it or run it and try and win this ball game. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try to put the hammer down and finish this one off. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. 40 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you.
Play action. Stroud now. Pass taken in by his big tight end. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Slot man moves right. They run here with Singletary. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. Five yards, a good run there, and now second and goal. It's largely been the air attack that's gotten them down here, but now is where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pickup there on first and goal. Second and goal from the one. Toss left side for Pierce. And this will result in him losing yardage. Back to the three. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time. So a big stop, and it's going to leave him with a fourth and goal. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. This a chip shot, a 20-yarder. The kick by Fairbairn is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, they picked up right where they left off in the first half. First drive after the break, they come away with three and increase that lead. Yeah, and you just want to keep building on that lead, don't you? Whether it's six points or three points, take everything you can get, keep maneuvering, keep adding to it, keep making it difficult for them to come back. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And Carter deciding not to bring this one out. So here comes the Raiders offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 16 yards on the play as they try to chip away at this 16-point deficit. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Looked like a pretty good, safe play right there. No, he's had trouble with the interceptions in this game there. Hits his guy out in the flat. Yeah, so many times we hear quarterbacks and offensive coordinators talk about in your progressions, you're either throwing the touchdown or you're throwing the check down. But earlier in the game, it was touchdown or interception. Now he got to the check down, a nice, safe throw and a good one. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He's got his target. That's complete. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, 
and find the first down. And that's what he just did. A little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get him about five yards. Oh, that was a thing of beauty right there. Look at how quick those blockers fired off the line once the ball was snapped. That was an O-line on a mission, all in sync, and the defense is lucky that play only picked up five yards. From the 43, here's second down and five. They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. And they got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Now a run with a fullback, Johnson. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. And how about that on third down? So many different directions an offense can go. Throw it out wide to the receivers, get it to their speedy running back. They changed up everything and handed it to the fullback, and he surprised them all and picked up a first down. O'Connell looking to throw on first. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long game or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. He'll let this go for Adams. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. Now, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. Play action. Now Connell. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Fourth down, and on comes the Raider kicker, Daniel Carlson. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. The kick by Carlson is good, and that will cut the lead down to 13. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. I have a theory about it. You want to hear? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Carlson now sets up to kick this away. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. And now out comes Houston. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Las Vegas. Welcome back, everybody. It's the Texans in control of the football and leading this game as well as we start the fourth. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. 
and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. A throw over the middle taken in. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and that will bring up second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. It's a gain of three, and it gets him the first. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower, that front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing, slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. Singletary again. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down, but a nice little game. 68 yards rushing for him now to this point. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. As we both know, there was a lot that went into why they made him their first-round pick this year. And part of it was what they saw in college, his playmaking ability when things break down. As soon as he saw he wasn't getting a lane to throw, he pivoted and found an alternate way to the marker. On first down, here's Stroud. He'll get this to Devin Singletary out of the backfield. Just a gain of a couple there and that'll make it second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Singletary here running out of the gun. What a great effort there. He's gonna get this inside the 15. And they'll spot it at the 13-yard line. Nice run. Ten yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself, and that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as he'll run on first down. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Devin Singletary with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans have put this one to bed here in the fourth quarter. Now the Houston offense is going to stay out there as they'll try for two. Stroud's going to try to throw for the conversion. Four step, and he's going to be taken down. It's a sack, and they fail on the try for two. Tried to roll out, make a play outside of the pocket, but couldn't get it done. When you don't have a lot of space for your receivers to operate, and down there it's really condensed when you're snapping the ball from the two-yard line, rolling out, you extend a play, but you don't necessarily open up better avenues for people. And on that play, there's just nowhere to go with the ball, and you end up getting sacked.
So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. From his end zone, here comes Carter. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. And now here come the Raiders. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers. You would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're yeah, absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. First down throw, O'Connell. That's complete into the hands of Myers. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Gets it downfield to Mayer. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans 33. 23 yards the pick up there. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Second down and four. Sticking to the air with O'Connell here. And it's complete to Adams. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. A well-executed 22-yard gain. I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big play. And now it appears that the referee's been buzzed, and we'll get a review. And this being inside two minutes of play, everything coming from up above. And O'Connell now to throw. And he's got Renfro in the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders. Four yards on the touchdown grab. And the Raiders have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team. But I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film. But... This one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Extra point by Carl. And this will be recovered by the Texans. So victory appears to be in sight. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. 
The defense can stop it twice more as they take a knee here. Now the Raiders going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. Now the Raiders going to burn their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. To a knee goes Stroud, and that is going to be all she wrote. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. And did he put that on a dime? He did. Wow. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. Well, Charles, it's great to win at home in the NFL. When you win on the road, it's a little extra special, isn't it? It is because, let's face it, in most cases, you're not expected to go on the road and win in the National Football League. It just doesn't usually compute. So to get out there, get that done, and then head back to your city with one in, your, in the victory column, oh, that's a fantastic feeling. 